We'll officially start the meeting. If you'll join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I now declare this meeting of the Board of Claremont County Commissioners for April the 3rd duly open and we'll start right with the regular agenda uh, item number B approval of regular session minutes of March 27th 2019 board I know those minutes have been provided to you for comment uh, and I ask if you've had ample time to review them if you have I would entertain a motion for approval I'll make that motion second it's been moved and seconded any further conversation or discussion roll call Judy Mrs. Corcoran yes Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. We'll move to item C, proclamation designation of National Crime Victims Rights Week in Claremont County, Ohio. <laughs> and I understand that Ms. Stephanie Ross will be accepting the proclamation. You guys are welcome to get up here. Stephanie, thanks for coming this morning and accepting the proclamation. The proclamation is for National Crime Victims' Rights Week here April the 7th through the 13th, 2019. Whereas in 2018, over 2,500 victims of reported crime in Claremont County received services from the Claremont County Prosecutor's Office. <clears throat> Eastern Avenue, YWCA, and other local victim service providers Whereas local victim service providers are committed to victims' rights, understanding that crime leaves a lasting physical, emotional, or financial impact on people, and that becoming a victim of crime is a challenge that no victim in our county should face alone. Whereas reaching and serving all victims of crime is essential to supporting communities, we renew our commitment to enhance a system of victim response because those who receive services and support are more likely to remain invested in the criminal justice process. Whereas local victim service providers use this week to honor victims' rights, celebrate the energy and commitment to overcome challenges that victims face, and create hope for the future of crime victims' rights. Whereas National Crime Victims' Rights Weeks provides an opportunity to ensure that we, as victim service providers, honor the rights of victims work diligently to secure their trust in the criminal justice system and social service system and continue to provide appropriate and accessible services. Whereas the Claremont County Prosecutor's Office is dedicated to strengthening victims and survivors in the aftermath of crime, building resilience in our communities and our victim responders and working for a better future for all victims and survivors. Now therefore, let it be proclaimed that the Claremont County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim the week of April 7th through the 13th, 2019 as National Crime Victims Rights Week in Claremont County and ask all citizens of Claremont County to take time to honor crime victims and those who serve them during this week and throughout the year. It's signed by the Board of Claremont County Commissioners, David L. Painter, President, Edwin H. Humphrey, Vice President, and Claire B. Corcoran, uh, Commission Member. Stephanie, on behalf of the Board of Claremont County Commissioners, uh, I would like for you to, to accept this certificate on our behalf for Victims Crime Thank Week. You very Thank much. you so Appreciate much. That. You bet. You get to say a few words and if you'd like. The podium is yours. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, just briefly, we are having our sixth annual Crime Victim Rights Week luncheon next Friday, April 12th, at the Patterson Park Lodge um, up on State Route 50. That is will be from 11 to 1 with the presentation beginning at noon. Uh, lunch will be provided. This is something we do um, annually now to honor crime victims in our community and like the proclamation says, those who serve them. It's something that's very near and dear to our office and um, I know to our heart. So I hope to see everybody there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank and you. you would honor <coughs> Thank you. 
We are now at item D in the agenda, public participation. If there's anyone that's here in attendance today from the public that would like to participate in the meeting, we welcome you to do so. If you would move to the podium in front, state your name and your address, we would be anxious to hear from you. Seeing that there's no one in the public in attendance, I will close public participation and we will move to item number E, the consent agenda. Board, a consent agenda has been uh, prepared and has been provided to you by draft copy uh, late last week for your review. <clears throat> Are there any items that you would like removed from the consent agenda for further discussion or conversation? Hearing none, I will move for a motion to approve the consent agenda as prepared. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as prepared. I'll second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Judy, roll call. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. And we will move to item F for the non-consent agenda. Starts on page 6. Item number 12, Claremont County Board of, of Commissioners Resolution for Payment of Bills, recommendation of Suki Sheets, our Assistant Administrator, that the Board of County Administrators adopt resolution number 0419, resolving to approve payment to vendors in the total amount of $1,000,000 $363,714.65 as set forth in the BCC approval invoice reports. <clears throat> Do I have a motion for approval? I'll make that motion. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mrs. Painter. Yes. Item number 13. Good morning. 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 Andy Kupta, Director of Community and Economic Development my readers it's my recommendation um, with concurrence of Suki Sheets to execute a quick claim deed for real estate owned by the Board of County Commissioners identified as parcel number 06028020 situated within the village of Batavia and is more fully described and set forth in exhibit a and exhibit B totaling 29.319 acres to create two new lots being 27.683 acres and described in exhibit a and 1.636 acres described in Exhibit B and to remit payment in the amount of $124 for recording fees. Uh, do you all have the maps? I can pass them out. They were in the packets with the topic paper, but I'd be happy to pass them out again yeah, if you want to see it real quick. Good. Just so you have it. Uh, this is the BCC owned property uh, that was split by the relocation of Clough Pike some years back, I think in 2015, I believe. And this will now create actual two separate parcels, which are in practical effect, two separate parcels. The smaller one, the 1.636, is where the um, BMV site is located at. And the remaining 27.683 acre parcel is hillside. So it will at least allow the board to have the flexibility to dispose um, or otherwise utilize uh, the parcels separately um, and not have to deal with it later. Okay. Thanks, Andy. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 13 for the quick claim deed to separate these two properties. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. I'll second that motion. And moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey. <clears throat> Aye. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Item number 14. Item 14 is a recommendation the Board of County Commissioners execute joint applications with the prosecuting attorney to the Claremont County Court of Common Pleas for employment of legal counsel as special counsel to represent the board in its official capacity and to advise it on legal matters. And the law firms are Frost, Brown, Todd, and this is relative to environmental matters, and that's primarily uh, Seacoast. 
uh, Lock Lord, and that's the underwriting of bonds and financial obligations, and Kegler, Brown, Hill, and Ritter, and that's relative to the closure of the coal ash storage units at uh, Vectjord Power Station. Board, you've heard the reading of item number 14 for joint application with the prosecuting attorney for uh, counsel. Do I have a motion for approval? I will make that motion. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Clarification? Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. That concludes the agenda we have in front of us. I understand we do have add-ons. Yes, sir. Uh, three add-ons for consideration. Uh, the first is a project closeout in Batavia Township Sidewalk Improvement Project. The second is a record plat in the Village of Batavia, and that's primarily the Corcoran buildings. And third is an application for financial assistance to the Ohio Public Works Commission. You, Board, you've heard the outline of the three add-ons that are being requested. I would request a motion to uh, allow these to be added to the agenda. So moved. A second that motion. Been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mrs. Corker. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. We will move to address these one at a time. Tom, if you would, uh, or Andy, the first one. I've got the first two. So first one's a recommendation. My recommendation um, to accept the contract by and between Claremont County, Ohio and JBS Excavating LLC of Hamersville, Ohio, previously ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on 3-15-2017 and subsequently amended on 9-20-2017 for project number 2015-02.4 relative to the Batavia Township Amelia Olive Branch Road Sidewalk Improvement Project in concert with the Claremont County Community Development Block Grant Program for fiscal year 2015 as complete as of 9 2017 and to approve application and certificate of payment number four final, which represents the, the release of retainage in the principal amount of $2,654.12 plus all accrued interest. Board, you've heard the reading of An Andy's recommendation for uh, economic development here. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. I'll second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. And the second one, Amy? Next item is my recommendation with the concurrence of Suki Sheets to execute record plat number 629-3131 for replat of the following lots situated within the Village of Batavia and to remit payment in the amount of $80 payable to the County Treasurer for the recording fees. Uh, this is replat of lot numbers 8A, 79A, and 79C to create new lot numbers 8B, 79E, and 79D. This is 175 and 179 East Main, uh, Corcoran East and West as we refer to them. And it's basically going to split the properties. Uh, so it separates the rear yards um, from the actual buildings themselves and provides the ability for the board to do something with those two buildings. I know there's been copious discussion in the past few years about the maintenance issues for those buildings and the, the use or lack of use by the, by the county and the potential to dispose of those. So this is helping to set us up for that. There's gonna be a few more steps before we can do anything with the actual properties uh, that have to occur, but this is the first step that has to happen. Board, you've heard the reading of the recommendation of Andy Kutta of the Economic Community and Economic Development Department for the replat of Corcoran East and West. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Then moved and second. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Painter. Yes. Thanks, Andy. <clears throat> How are you? Good, good morning. Morning. Craig Stevenson with the uh, Stony County Engineer's Office. I too need assistance. Um, this is a recommendation of uh, Patrick J. Munger, County Engineer, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Agle, County Administrator, to adopt res resolution number 4119. Judy? Yes. Mm -hmm. 4119, authorizing applications for aid to local government for infrastructure improvements and authorizing the execution, certification, and submission of said application for project support for the following infrastructure improvement. Project for program year 33, 
in the amounts outlined below to the Ohio Public Works Commission, including all understandings and assurances therein required and to act in accordance with the application and to provide such additional information as may be required pursuant to Chapter 164 of the Ohio Revised Code, and further to authorize Patrick J. Munger to execute an Ohio Public Works Commission project grant agreement to the amounts listed below. Actually, that particular aspect was not contained it's not. within the I'll, resolution. I'll, 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 yeah. Let it's me explain okay. real quick. Mm -hmm. What the resolution does is it allows us to apply to OPWC for funds and also designates the fiscal offer project manager and chief executive officer so that they are correct when the project agreement arrives uh, to the board. So strike that last sentence. You've got to do the contingency. Correct. And then so what will happen will be there will be a additional resolution once we have the project agreement in hand that will authorize uh, Patrick J. Monger to authorize that particular uh, project agreement. And okay. that should be the first week of July. One uh, caveat, the original uh, grant agreement that was written in November um, indicated a ODOT uh, OKI grant amount of $5,650,000. Since that time, we worked with uh, OKI, and they added another two million dollars to the project, which was um, a big, uh, a big, you know, funding-wise, great for uh, for the TID and for the county. That did not change anything relative to the grant. It just offloaded TID money that was to be committed, and replaced that with OKI money. So that's why the uh, seven million six hundred fifty thousand dollar number is included in the resolution. They don't know. Oh, the project? Yes, sorry. Uh, this is the old 74 uh, widening project, uh, approximately from Schoolhouse Road to Glen Estee, and it includes portions of Paul Drive and Glen Estee Wethensville. It is also part of segment 4A, uh, State Route 32 improvements that uh, the county recently, with ODOT, um, recently applied for an infra grant. That we hopefully will hear something here shortly on that. Any other questions? That's it. <clears throat> You've heard the reading of the add-on for the uh, OPWC grant and the follow-on explanation that's been provided. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. I'll second that motion. Then moved and seconded. Any further conversation or discussion? Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Painter. I'll abstain. Any other add-ons? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. <clears throat> Since there are no other add-ons, we'll move to item number G of the agenda. <clears throat> I'm requesting an executive session pursuant to section 121.22 G3 of the Ohio Revised Code to confer with the prosecuting attorney regarding pending or imminent litigation. Do I have a motion? So moved. I'll second that motion. Then moved and seconded. Roll call, Judy. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mrs. Corcoran? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. <clears throat> we will move to executive session. We will return and do further business. Thank you. We are back from executive session. There were no decisions made. And we will continue on with our regular agenda. Tom, are there any additional items to come before this board today? Yes, sir. <clears throat> any open discussion from any of the board members? Anything you'd like to discuss? Yes, sir. All right. Then I will ask for a motion for adjournment. I'll make that motion. Second. Been moved and seconded. Roll call, Judy. Mrs. Corcoran. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Painter. Yes. Thank you for attending the board meeting today and hope you have a great day.